DET, dispersive effect termination, describes the airflow um, that comes over the rim and what we're doing is um, we're dispersing the excited air mm -hmm. and terminating it in a way that reattaches the airflow. And in simple terms, this just means that the air that's flowing over the wheel is less excited, so it's a smoother airflow. Sure. How is it that smooth airflow, which seems to be kind of contrary to the, the typical trend of um, a wide spoke face, sure. Sure. which is not necessarily smooth airflow, it's actually more turbulent airflow, how is it that smooth airflow is a better solution? Well, <clears throat> we have to have an understanding of exactly what happens uh, in the wind tunnel when you're measuring drag. Let's take a, an airplane as an example. If, if you have an aircraft and it's, it's flying along, when you think of lift, you think of the aircraft going up, but you think of drag pulling the aircraft backwards. So, so what you have is you have drag in this direction and you have, you have drag in this direction, you have lift in this direction. So they're in two different axes. For a bicycle wheel, this is different. Uh, for a bicycle wheel, <clears throat> if, imagine for a minute, the wind is coming towards us, you have drag pulling the wheel in this direction, uh -huh. but what is lift? Lift is not in this direction. Actually, lift means forward thrust, so it's in the same axis as the drag. In the wind tunnel, when you get a drag measurement, it's not actually drag in the traditional sense that you would measure, say, in an aircraft, which is pulling it backwards. It's the combination of the drag value pulling it backwards and lift, which is actually forward thrust, helping move the wheel forward. And it's the net sum of the two. So if the drag pulling it backwards is greater than the lift or the forward thrust, then you end up with a net drag, and if the forward thrust can overcome it, then you end up with a positive number. Most people are familiar with the phenomenon that when you yaw a bike wheel, the drag will drop. Actually what happens is when you yaw the bike wheel, the drag increases. So intuitively think about this for a minute. If you're holding a wheel and the wind's blowing toward you, and you yaw it, you're probably going to feel more pressure. You know, because you've increased the size of the frontal. Exactly, the frontal area increases. So, of course, if you're holding the wheel in this direction, Absolutely. you're going to feel more pressure. Well, what happens is exactly the same thing in the wind tunnel. When you yaw the wheel, the drag actually goes up. But, at the same time, when you yaw the wheel, it behaves like a sail on a sailboat, uh -huh. and you actually generate forward thrust. So you're actually generating lift or forward thrust. And what happens when you yaw a bike wheel that's, that's an efficient shape, your lift goes up faster than your drag. Gotcha. So, so you have what's called a lift over drag ratio. And <clears throat> since your lift goes up faster than your drag as you yaw the wheel, the lift is greater than the drag, so you get a net sum of forward thrust or lift. Okay, so when when you get a, a value from wind tunnel testing, and and it says that <clears throat> your drag is dropping, actually, that's a little bit misleading. Your drag's going up, and your lift is going up, but your lift is going up faster than your drag. And and in an efficient bike wheel <clears throat> design, your your lift at its kind at its optimal angle will be 10 to 12 times the value of the drag. Okay. So your L over D ratio can be 10, 11, 12 for a good wheel. Now, here's why the DET is so important. Um, so think about, again, think about the wheel as a sail. And um, I think everyone's familiar with a, a sailboat, and that is that the faster the boat goes, it seems like the, the more the boat will 
keel, right? So you see the sail, the boats, especially the catamarans, you, you see the one of the hulls comes out of the water, right? And then it's really flying. Well, the reason that happens is because you have a large side force component. So what happens with a bike wheel is exactly the same. The larger your side force component, the more lift you get. But this isn't necessarily a good thing because if you get a large side force component, it makes the wheel harder to steer. It, it makes the wheel less stable. Mm -hmm. If you have a wheel that has very low drag, and, and this, uh, the DET shape has very low drag. In fact, it has much lower drag than a wheel that has a broad spoke face. So imagine the air coming over the rim. This is truly an airfoil shape. It, it reattaches very nicely here at the spoke face. If you have a wide spoke face, you have a lot of turbulence because uh, you, know, you sitting have behind the, the sit, sitting the behind the spoke face. Yeah. Okay? So what this means is that if you compare this wheel to the exact same wheel but it's got a wide spoke face, this wheel has lower drag. Now, <clears throat> let's, let's imagine that we're going to assign a value to that. Let's say the drag value is 1, just for purposes of discussion, right? Now, <clears throat> we know that <clears throat> when we yaw the wheel, we want to generate lift. And in order for us to generate, say, twice as much lift as drag, say we want our lift to be 2, mm -hmm. so that the net sum is positive in our favor. So we want to double the value of the drag. So we take it from 1 to 2. Um, that would be a good situation. Now, if we start with the drag value of 2 instead of 1, which, for example, a, a broad spoke face, now we want to double that. Now we have to have a lift of 4. That means our side force has to be twice as much as if we only needed a lift value of 2, right? So the idea is, and we talked about this earlier, is turbulence begets turbulence, right? But so it, it's a multiplier. So if you start out with low drag, you can have less side force yeah. to generate, to, to double the amount of forward thrust. So the whole idea is low drag is starting out with the lowest possible drag means that you can generate lower side force to actually have a, a lift over drag ratio of two. You know, if you have a drag of one and a lift of two, your L over D is two. And that's better than a, a lift of four and a drag of two when you have an L over D of two. Because you have less instability or, or less of a side force component, you effectively uh, have an L over D of two but with less side force. And that's the whole concept behind having smooth airflow and low drag.